Welcome back to Lower Keys Living, everybody. And if you're in the market for a flats boat or a bay boat, this is the episode to watch. Um, if you follow my channel, you know I've got this Dolphin 18 backcountry. Love this boat. When I was shopping for it, I looked really hard at the Action Craft 19 and the Hughes Redfisher 18. All three really similar boats in design, layout, how they handle, and their functionality. There's just a few things I like better about the Dolphin than the other two, which is why I went with the Dolphin. Um, but I gotta say, when Andy Lowe, the owner and founder designer from Tarpon Boatworks called, said he had a boat down in the Keys this weekend, wanted to know if I wanted to take a ride and uh, do a walkthrough on it, jumped all over it. Uh, I don't use the term game changer and I hate when people use that term, it's so overused. That should be reserved for things like smartphones, ring doorbell camera, major innovations, uh, artificial intelligence, but the uh, Tarpon Bay 19 is a radically different design and if you take a look at it uh, it's hard not to want to step up into that next level of boat. So I'm going to take you through a slideshow, show you the differences, what I really love about my boat and the really standout features of the Tarpon Bay 19. Then I'm going to take you out on the water and do a walkthrough of the Tarpon Bay 19. But definitely if you're in the market for a bay boat or a flats boat, don't buy anything until you check out the uh, Tarpon Bay 19. So stay tuned, follow along, got lots of good information here for you. All right, let's take a look at these two boats side by side. First here on the left, the Tarpon Bay 19. Um, got a chance to really go through this boat with Tarpon Bay Boatworks owner, Andy Lowe. Um, really appreciate him taking the time and sharing his boat with me. And then the right, this is my Dolphin Backcountry 18. If you've watched my videos, you know how much I use this boat and love this boat. So um, what I point out here on this one, uh, some of the negatives that I've really discovered about the Dolphin, don't take it as me not liking my boat. I still love my boat as much as I ever did, which is really noticing the advancements between the Dolphin, what Action Craft offers, Hughes offers, and so the more traditional flat boats that you see here. Uh, the Tarpon Bay really is a massive step up in the quality and the design and the engineering on it. So I need to go through these really quick, um, So, but give you some stills and give you a chance to see things. And then I will take you out on the water on the Tarpon Bay 19 so you can see the boat in action somewhat. So first, let's start here. Um, this is my Dolphin 19 tied up at the dock at my house. Um, you can see a little note I've got on the other side. The stern deck on this is tiny. Uh, you can't really fish from the stern deck at all. Uh, the, the console on this and your traditional flats boats are pretty far back, which really limits the size and space you have on that stern deck. So, but what I really love about the Dolphin uh, is when we're looking at it, we we're looking for one, a shallow draft boat to take out in the backcountry to fish and to visit sandbars. And two, we wanted something that was big enough and safe enough for us to have the whole family, some friends, plus our four dogs. And this cockpit really offers that, especially when we throw the bean bags up into the front of the cockpit. Uh, way more space than what it might look like in this photograph because we can fit everybody in here, plus with the bucket seats. Uh, the other thing I really like, the V-hole cuts through chop really well. Uh, you know, been out on some pretty significant chop storms blow up down here. So you've got a nice safe drive. And the big flare on the bow really pushes the uh, splash away from you. So it is a very dry ride for such a small boat. A uh, couple of things I don't like, and I'll give you these more in detail, is access to the electronics and the console and the console is really poor and then access to the bilge systems, that's your bilge pump, your live well pumps, your hydraulics for the jack plate and trim tabs, really poor, tiny little ports to access those, which makes it really frustrating to try and work on those systems. Um, one thing I do love is the over engine pulling tower. Um, this boat and then the Tarpon Bay actually has a design where the towers sit back off the back of the boat and they're over the engine. So on my boat, it really, helps not it doesn't reduce the space on that stern deck as small as it is any further so kind of a key design on this um, and then again love the bucket seats um, this is something i installed i've actually since this photograph update upgraded these seats uh, these are on here for a few years and just rotted out in the sun so i've replaced those with newer bucket seats 
uh, but I love them. They're super comfortable. We will travel 30, 40 miles to a couple of our favorite wrecks in the Gulf to fish or reach in our sandbars. So it's nice having these comfortable seats for those long trips. Um, and again, the other thing is the live well sit behind these seats and whether it's the bench seats or these bucket seats, that stern area is so small, it's really hard to access those live wells to catch a live bait out of when you're fishing. Just um, not a good, not good access to it. It's always a struggle, especially I'm old, I'm stiff, not very bendy. So trying to get in and over those, uh, not the easiest thing for me. So comparing that to look at the massive stern deck here on the Tarpon Bay 19. Uh, the three big hatches are all plumbed for live wells or you can use them for uh, cold beverage uh, coolers. They are fully insulated, uh, really, really nice. They uh, great, great access and it's so big. You can walk back there, uh, then you can see the net and the rocket launcher there. Really easy to get your live bait out of these. Good thing is you notice the over engine pulling platform. This is mounted on the stern deck. Uh, but it's angled back so it sits out over your engine so you're not losing any of that stern deck space with this boat. And then also you can see that large hatch under the polling uh, uh, tower. That gives you access to all your build systems and it is so big and roomy. Uh, I was really jealous of that feature, the ability to get in there and work, switch live well pumps out, access your uh, bilge pumps and access all your hydraulics. Really a phenomenal setup. And then loads of leg room between that uh, bench seat and the console. The console actually angles away. And there's actually storage drawers underneath that seat that pull out for your tackle. So plenty of place to store your tackle right there on the boat. It's a feature you don't see on any, if, uh, uh, if at all, or you hardly see any, if at all, on any of the other flats boats. So really cool feature is having that tackle storage right there. Uh, again, here is the dolphin out of the sandbar. And one of the things, my least favorite things about this is the stern sits way too low to the water. I've only got a few inches of clearance uh, between the water and that gunnel. So if I have more than five, four or five inches of chop coming up from behind the boat, I've got to pull that power pole, spin the boat around and anchor it from the bow to keep it from getting overrun with chop or waves coming over the back of the boat. And this is what the live wells are empty. Uh, there's two 39 gallon live wells on this. You add 80, almost 80 gallons of water. That's a lot more weight sitting on the back of the boat. Um, so it's uh, got to be almost perfectly flat in order to anchor up like this with the stern facing into the wind and the chop uh, in order to use the power pole. So definitely do not like that. Um, that little circle, that is the access hatch to the electronics uh, on the console. There's a small door that folds down on the front of the console to access the battery and a few of the uh, electronic switches, but you really can't access the connections up on the console from that door. Uh, so really frustrating when you're having to work in such a tiny, tight space with not easy access to it. So definitely something I would change um, on this boat. Um, and then the 39 gallon fuel storage is up here in the bow. I realize they have to do this to try and balance this boat out somewhat, um, but it takes up what could be otherwise really phenomenal uh, storage space, which the Tarpon Bay has. And then if you look at how this boat and pretty much every other traditional flat boat sits on the water, they're all stern heavy. Everything rolls to the back of the boat. Um, so yeah, take a look at the photographs of the other boats. You know, look at Action Craft, look at Hughes, the Dolphins boat, they all sit this way, which limits that clearance on that stern of the boat. Um, so just point, wanted to point that out. Uh, it is one of the frustrating uh, parts of this boat is how many times I've got an anchor as opposed to just dropping the power pole because of the wind and chop conditions. So jumping forward, let's jump right in here to the Tarpon Bay uh, 19. Just a phenomenal boat. Uh, you can already see how level this sits. Uh, so the console is moved forward. This does two things. This shifts a lot of the weight forward in the boat, which helps level it out. And two, it really helps create that massive stern deck you saw in that previous picture. 
Um, the 39 gallon fuel tank is under the floor um, and it's uh, totally encased. So completely corrosion resistant, it is sealed up. So you don't need to worry about corrosion on that fuel tank. So lower center of gravity and it's out of the way. And that leaves that whole bow area for massive amounts of storage, larger anchor space, massive storage locker. Um, it's great. It is definitely a high jealousy point of me for that. Um, the other thing is, notice the added clearance for the water here between the water and the gunnel on this boat. Um, you can take a lot more chop coming up against the stern on this than you can uh, the traditional flats boats. So another feature that I really like. Um, and then again, look how level this boat sits. It looks like it's already on plane. And part of that, or a large part of that is due to, well, I guess, like I said earlier, it's so well balanced. And then to that plumb stem bow gives it an extra two feet of water line. If you go back to the previous picture of the dolphin, how high that nose sits up out of the water, this kit has an extra two feet of water line. That really adds to the stability, both at anchor and underway. Uh, when this boat was tied up at the dock and we had two large adults, we were walking around on this boat, it barely rocked side to side, really stable. It's almost like you had a sea keeper gyroscope on this boat. That's how stable it felt to me. So was really impressed with that. The other thing I did notice with this boat when we were out on the water um, that this plumb uh, stem bow gives is when you're turning, um, for those older folks that know what slot cars are, it's almost like driving that slot car around the track. It just stays right on line. There's no drift to it whatsoever. So uh, it really tracks turns nicely. So that's a quick look at these with some still photographs. I'm going to take you out for a quick ride on the action craft and I'll walk you through the experience there. And also, um, I do a voiceover. Andy from uh, Tarpon Boat Works did a walkthrough, but it was a little windy. It's too much wind noise. So I'm going to talk over that portion of the video as we go through the boat that we demoed. Uh, but again, really nice boat. If you're looking for a new flats boat or even a bay boat, I would totally look at this as a uh, top choice. So this is Andy Lowe, the owner and founder of Tarpon Boat Works. Um, my recording, the volume didn't turn out well. It was a little breezy, got a lot of wind noise. So I'm just gonna narrate over what he was talking about. But you can just see how massive the stern deck is on this 19 foot, foot flats boat. Just tons of space. Uh, this is just showing the uh, live wells. There's, it's got three spots where you have live wells. You'll see one is set up as a cooler, but it is plumbed for the live well. Um, you can see the plumbing in the side and same thing on the other side, but really easy to access all of these. One thing I want you to notice as we are walking around this boat, two full size men, this boat barely moves as you're walking around. It's something really different uh, compared to your traditional flats boats. Uh, so this one's equipped with 175 horsepower mercury, tops out at 60 plus miles an hour, uh, jack plate, uh, Minn Kota sea anchor, uh, here as well as the main Coda trolling motor up front. Uh, but super, super solid looking boat, but I love the space on the deck. This one's got a custom bimini top on it with extra rod holders. Uh, it's small enough that it doesn't get in your way when you're fishing, but it provides nice shade when you're out in the backcountry on those hot windless days. Uh, this particular model has a 16 inch Garmin display on it. And one thing that Andy has done with all his boats are the electronic switches instead of the manual switches on that really reduces the connections involved, uh, corrosion worries, makes them super easy to service and really increases the longevity of your electronics. Another really cool feature is that built-in electric phone charger. Super nice safety feature. Most everybody, especially in intro waters, first thing you're grabbing in the emergency is your telephone. Keeps it right there, keeps it fully charged. So a nice little touch on these. He's really thought about everything. And when you're talking to him, you really get that sense of father, fatherly pride. He's not a salesperson. He's taken a lot of pride into creating something really epic. And again, something I'm jealous of is this massive storage locker up here on the front. Uh, because on the tarpon, my, not the tarpon, on the uh, 
Dolphin, my dolphin boat and the other flats boats, they use the, that as fuel storage to balance the boat works out. Here he's got a nice cooler up front, backrest for seating. Um, it is one difference between mine is that area in front of the console. I've got a massive, probably twice the space in that front area forward of the console for seating um, and a much bigger cockpit area. Uh, but again, he sacrifices cockpit area for fishability. And when I'm going out fishing, if we're fly fishing or casting, usually only two of us out on the boat, uh, given the size of the boat. So really don't need that extra cockpit space. I use it when we're going out with the family and dogs, uh, but not for fishability. Here we place that forward polling platform or fishing station with a Yeti cooler that actually he's got mounts to the strap right in place. So instead of a little fishing platform to raise up, you can use the Yeti cooler, which makes it nice for keeping cold drinks handy for the person up in the front of the boat. Uh, again, big game changer difference is this front of the console opens up, super easy access for all of your uh, electronics, and everything is laid out, marked perfectly. Another cool little feature is your battery switches in here. Every boat comes with a remote controlled battery switch. If you watch that red switch here, you push that, you don't need to open it up. You just push your button and it automatically turns your switch on. No reason to have to get into this panel. But again, that nice big space makes it easy to work on. Here I am just giving you a quick look at that plum stem bow and just how much it increases the water line and why it adds so much more stability to this boat. Um, Andy gave me a great technical description of why that um, really helps with the performance and stability of the boat. Uh, I won't go into details, but it really is a game-changing difference uh, on here. When we're walking around, you can tell how steady this boat is, how fast it's up on plane, and how smooth it rides. So got a chance to take this boat out. Here we're heading out the channel, and you can see how quickly we went from idle speed up to on plane. Um, just a few seconds, as fast as I've ever seen a flats boat come up on plane. A lot of that, actually all of it has to do with the engineering, the design, that plum stem bow, the way the hull is designed on this. And you can see it is just a rock solid ride. In fact, I've been on 22, 23 foot bay boats, um, pathfinders. This boat is as dry and stable a ride at a 19 foot boat as those boats are in that 22 to 23 foot range. So if you're shopping for a bay boat, one of the smaller bay boats in that size range, I would take a hard look at this. It's gonna give you a much better fishability in the back country. And on a slightly choppy day out in the ocean, I would totally take this boat out in any conditions that I would take one of those 22, 23 foot bay boats out in. Uh, equally comparable performance uh, on the water and safety wise. So really nice boat. Um, we brought this into the Venture Out Marina to the fuel dock. Uh, just its distinctive design and styling really made it a head turner. People were really turning around to check out and see what we were what we were on. We Try to get a good look at it because it is so distinctive looking with that plum stem design and just the overall size of the decking. So again, I hate to say it, but if I were in the market for a flats boat, and again, looking at the Action Craft, the Hughes and the Dolphin, and this one, um, prices are all right in line. I would definitely be looking at this boat. Um, just heads and tails, much better design, much smoother ride, much steadier fishing platform, and a much, much better fishing platform all around than those other three designs. Um, no kidding aside, I love my Dolphins flat boat, but I'd be lying to you if I told you that this were not a better all around fishy, fishable flats boat. Uh, so again, if you're in the market, take a look at this. I'll put a link to their website on here. Uh, reach out to Andy if you got any questions and definitely test demo one of these if you're looking at a new flats boat or even a small bay boat. Definitely uh, reach out to Andy and take one of these for a test drive before you commit to anything else. Thanks for watching. We will see you again next week with another video. Hope you like this information. Leave some comments below. Tell me what you think of the Tarpon Flats Boat, what kind of Flats Boat you have. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.